Hello there, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 2.4, Partial Quotients. Our essential question for tonight is how can you use partial quotients to divide by two-digit divisors? Go ahead and turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 2.4 and we'll begin. So let's look at question number two together. It is 540 divided by 36. Now I want to put this in a word problem for you just so you can understand what's going on. I'm going to say that there were 540 stickers that I had in a box and I wanted to share them with 36 students. How many stickers will each student get? Let's find out. So what we're going to do is use the partial quotient method. We used this method last year in fourth grade, if you remember, with division, where we take groups of 10 or groups of just easy numbers of your divisor that you would like to subtract from your 540. It's really called repeated subtraction. So let's go ahead and say if I had 540 stickers and I want to share them with 36 kids, how many would each get? Well, let's go ahead and start off with an easy number that I can take away from my 540. If I had 36 kids and I wanted to give each kid 10 stickers, I would take away 360 from my 540. So will you go ahead and write 360 in your GoMath book right below your 540? So we're subtracting 360 stickers from our 540 stickers. That means each of the 36 kids have already received 10 stickers each. Let's go ahead and subtract 540 minus 360. 0 minus 0 ones are 0. 4 tens minus 6 tens. I can't do that, so let's regroup. Take away from our hundreds, we're going to make that 4, and I'll add 10 tens to my tens. So we have 14 tens now minus 6 tens is going to be 8 tens because 14 minus 6 is 8. And now I have 400 minus 300 is 100. Now I have 180 stickers left to divide among the 36 kids. Now instead of taking away 36 a whole lot of times from 180, that might make some mistakes if I subtract wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and estimate. I want to say that I can take probably about four groups of 36 away from 180. But I have to know what that is first. So right over to the side, find a room on your paper that you can write 36 times 4 and see if that's less than 180. 6 times 4 one is a 24 ones. 4 times 3 tens is 12 tens. Plus another 2 would be... 14 tens. So that's less than 180. So I can subtract four groups of 36 and that's going to be 144. So let's go ahead on our paper together and write 144. And how many groups of 36 is that? Four. Let's go ahead and subtract that. 180 minus 144 is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and regroup, make that six ones three tenths and zero in my hundreds. Well, look at that. I still have 36 stickers still to divide among 36 kids. And I know I can give each one of those kids one sticker each. Therefore, if I add up all of my partial quotients, I have 10 plus four plus one is 15. So I could say 540 divided by 36 is 15. And if you're not sure if you did it right, you could always check with multiplication 15 times 36 and see if it equals 540. Okay, boys and girls, now let's look at question number four. It says 478 divided by 16. I'd like to set it up as 478 divided by 16. And I want to go ahead and start subtracting groups of 16 that I can take away from 478. Now I know the easy one to always do is groups of 10. So if I have 16 times 10 would be 160. So let's play it safe and let's go ahead and take away 160, which is 10 groups of 16. And let's go ahead and subtract. I still have 318 left. I can keep going. I don't want to take 16 away. That would take too long. But I do know that I can still take away 160 from 318. So let's go ahead and subtract again. I'm going to take away another group of 160 from 318. Do this with me in your Go Math book. And that's going to be 10 more groups of 16. When we subtract, I have 158. Now, can I take away 160 from 158? I can't because it's not enough. 
But what I do know is number sense, and I know 158 is really close to 160. In fact, it's just two away. So I'm going to pick a number very close to 10, but not greater than 10, because this is less than 160. I'm going to be safe and say 9. Let's do 9 groups of 16. So I'm going to put 9 over here, but I have to figure out what is 9 times 16. Let's find a happy place on your paper somewhere and do 16 times 9. I use a commutative property and switch those around. 16 times 9, 9 times 6 is 54, 9 times 1 group of 10 is 9 tens plus 5 more tens will be 14 tens, which actually makes my answer to be 144. So let's go ahead and take away 144 from my 158, and that's going to be 4 in my 1's place and a 1 in my 10's place. So let's add this up. 10 plus 10 plus 9 is a total of 29 with a remainder of 14. Now my remainder is kind of big, isn't it? But remember, if your remainder is less than your divisor, you're done. You're finished. You can't subtract 16 from 14 at all. So if we were to call this a word problem, I could have said I had 478 pieces of bubble gum I shared with 16 kids, and each kid received 29 pieces, and I had 14 left over for myself. All right, if you think you know how to do this based on partial quotients, you can try to pause the video now and try it on your own and then press play and see if we agree. If you're not confident, go ahead and do this next one with me. Okay, the equation is 625 divided by 25. Let's say I had 625 seashells and I want to share them with 25 kids in the classroom. All right. Can you think of a number you could take away from 625 that are groups of 25? Now I know 10 groups of 25 is going to be 250. But I also know that I could do 20 groups of 25 and that would be 500. Because 25 times 20 is going to be 500. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take away 500 from my 625, which will be 20 groups of 25. Now suppose that you didn't want to take away 20 groups to subtract 500, and you wanted to take away 250, which is 10 groups, and minus 250 again, which is 10 groups. You're still going to end up with 125 right here, and that's fine. Um, do whatever is easiest for you. Now we have 125 to divide between 25 kids. I still have 125 shells right here. So let's go ahead and list our multiples of 25. 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. I can take away 125 from 125. And when I count by 25s, I have 25, 50, 75, 100. That's four 25s. Plus one more 25 is going to be five groups of 25 and there's nothing left over, so my answer will be 25. So each kid got 25 shells. Okay, let's go ahead and try number eight, 322 divided by 14. Go ahead and press pause if you wanna do this on your own. If not, just go ahead and continue doing this with me. All right, we're gonna start out with 322 divided by 14. I wanna go ahead and make this a word problem. Let's 322 Fall Festival tickets were sold at Fall Fest to 14 children, and each child had the exact same amount. How many tickets did each child receive? All right, so we have 322 tickets divided with by 14 kids. Let's go ahead and take away a comfortable number that we can do. I'm going to go ahead and minus 140 because I know 140 is going to be 10 groups of 14 because 14 times 10 is 140. When we subtract, have to regroup right there, I'm going to have 182 left. Now, if I look right here, I've already taken away 140, which was 10 groups. I can still do that again because I have 182 here. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract another 140 tickets, and that will be 10 tickets per kid, and we have 42 left. So now I'm going to go ahead and take away, I'm going to take away 28, because I know 14 times 2 is 28. And that's a safe number for me. 
If you want to take away 14 one at a time, that can take a while, but I feel comfortable taking away 28. All right, now 42 minus 28 is going to be 14. And I still have 14 kids left with 14 tickets to give away. And that means each child got one ticket. And now we have zero as a remainder. Therefore, how many tickets did each child receive? They received 10, 20, 21, 22, 23 tickets each. And if you feel comfortable, you can always multiply 23 times 14 would equal 322, just to check it. Okay, question number 10 says, a factory processes 1,560 ounces of olive oil per hour. The oil is packaged into 24 ounce bottles. How many bottles does a factory fill in one hour? All right, boys and girls, go ahead and set up your equation. 1,560, we know that it's packaged into 24 ounce bottles. And there's a total of 1,560 ounces. We want to know how many do they fill in one hour. All right, because it, it says per hour is how much they um, process. Okay, go ahead and you can pause the video and work this one out on your own if you feel comfortable. Or you can go ahead and do it along with me for guidance. All right, now I can subtract 240, which is 10 groups of 24, but I would rather, but looking at my dividend, it's pretty big. That's going to take me a long time. I know 24 plus 24 is 48, so I'm going to go ahead and take away 480 from 1,560, and that's going to be 20 groups of 24. Now let's go ahead and subtract together. and I have 1,080. Because I took away 480, which was 20 groups, and I still have this much left over, I can still take away another 480 ounces. So let's go ahead and subtract 480 from my 1,080. And I know that I have 600 ounces left over. Remember, don't forget to record your partial products over on the side. All right, I have 600 ounces, and looking right here, I can still take away another 480 from 600. Go ahead and do that with me if you're doing this along with me. I can't take 8 from 0, so I need to regroup and have 10 tens minus 8 tens is 2 tens, and I have 100. Don't forget to record your partial products over here. Now I have 120. I can take away how many groups of 24? Now you can go slow and you can take away 24 at a time, but that can take a while. I'm going to go ahead and estimate that I do know I could probably take away four groups of 24. Let's go over here and work it out. Four groups of 24 is going to be 96. So I can take away 96 from 120, and that's going to be four groups. Let's work that out and have... 24 left over. Oh my goodness, we can do one more group, can't we? So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 24 from my 24, and I should have one more group over here. So if I add up all my partial quotients, I have 20, 40, 60, 64, 65. So I could say that they can make 65 bottles in one hour. All right, let's take a look at number 11. Number 11 says, a pond at a hotel holds 4,290 gallons of water. The groundskeeper drains the pond at a rate of 78 gallons of water per hour. How long will it take to drain the pond? So what do we know so far? We know that the hotel pond holds 4,290 gallons. It can drain 78 gallons each hour, per hour. How long will it take? Well, if we know it can do 78 for each hour, and there's this many gallons is going to take a while. So let's go ahead and use repeated subtraction to figure this one out. We can go ahead and set up our problem 4,290 divided by 78. All right, let's stop and think. I can probably take away easily 10 groups of 78 because 78 times 10 is 780. Now make sure you write your 780 in your hundreds place, tens place, and ones place, not under your thousands place. And that's going to be 10 groups of 780. And as we subtract, 
we see that we still have plenty left over. We have 3,510 gallons left over. We can keep going, can't we? Now you can take away another 780. Now if you want to take away bigger chunks by doing your own personal multiplication, that's fine as well. Go ahead and do that. I have 2,730 left. Is that what you have on your paper? All right, now let's take away another. We could take away another 780, but you know what? I'm looking, that's going to take a while. I'm going to come over here to the side, and I'm going to go ahead and add up 780. I'm going to do another 780 and another 780, so three times. And let's see how much we have. That's 2,340. I can take away that many. 2,340. I just saved myself a bunch of steps. And that's going to be 30 groups of 78. And why did I get 30 instead of 10? Because here's 10 groups of 78, another 10, and another 10. So that's going to be 30 groups. All right, let's go ahead and subtract. Oh, this is going to be so much easier now because we did a bigger chunk. Okay, 13 minus 4 is 9 tenths and three hundreds. Okay, now I can take away more groups of 78, but I know I cannot take away 10 groups because that would be 780. So let's go ahead and cut that in half. Let's go ahead and do five groups of 78. So somewhere off to the side, do 78 times five with me. Okay, five times eight is 40. Five times seven is 35 plus four more is 30. Nine. Look at that. I had a good estimate, didn't I? So let's go ahead and take away 390, which is going to be five groups of 78. And there's nothing left over. Add up your partial quotients. 10 plus 10 plus 30 plus 5 is going to be 55. It's going to take 55 hours to drain that pond. That's going to be a long time. Okay, go ahead and turn your Go Math book over to the next page, and I want you to answer questions one and two on your own. Please show your work in this section. Now, if you don't have enough room in this section, you can always get a piece of notebook paper, but if you do, please tuck it in your book so when we come around and check, we can see that you showed your work because they don't really give you a lot of room in your Go Math book on this type of a question. And please don't forget to rate yourself up at the top of your GoMath page because this is where Miss Wingo and myself will be looking for how you feel about this topic. All right, at the top of your page, please either write one for novice, two for apprentice, three practitioner, or four for expert. And don't forget, also, we expect you to do questions three through six all on your own, and we will check those tomorrow first thing in class. Have a great night.